What would you tell that individual, man? If, if, if he wanted to get into this lifestyle and, and the life that I lived in the past, I would tell him directly that it's not worth it to get into the lifestyle of a, of a gangster or a MM member or a Sureño is not worth it because all you're going to find is nothing but misery, loneliness, and you're going to see that all your loved ones little by little are going to leave you alone because you're putting the, the, you're putting the organization and the gang first before your family, and you're going to realize that it wasn't worth it because I just went through it. I've been many years in this, and it's not worth it, and now I'm making a change in my life for the positive. That's why I do these stories with you and try and put my stories out there so all my fans can understand. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded understand all the loneliness and all the heartache that I went through and all the crying in my cell when I'm by myself and, and single cell of uh, feeling heart heartache in my heart and, and and that's why it's not worth it. This is Conejo coming at you and the reason I'm sharing this story with you is because a lot of a lot of because I haven't been on the air for a minute because my buddy Tony was training to get prepared for a fight, he, he was gonna get, he was gonna fight in a, in a, in a, in a fight in a challenge in TV, and uh, uh, unfortunately they they they, uh, they called it off. They called it off. So uh, uh, now we're back on the air. That's why I wasn't on the air, and a lot of you fans were getting at me through my tablet or or writing to me, and now I'm getting at you with the story because the reason I tell these stories is to help out people so they can really see and open their eyes and really see. And really see for what it is, and, and 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 open their eyes and see that it's not worth it. Because I got a lot of a lot of youngsters that get at me and tell me, "Hey, Cornell, your story touched my heart. Hey, this and this. I moved from LA. I moved over here to another state, Florida, Nebraska, different places to get out of the gang area so they can have an opportunity in life." And I and I and I and I and I and I, and I welcome them that, and I appraise them for that because. They need to have a change, and now I'm going to get to my story. I'm going to tell you a story about Richard Martinez, and this is a story that can probably relate because Richard Martinez was the first guy now that I really actually got close after Gato because he's from my area. He's from San Diego, Gato from, from Logan Heights. He's one of the original carnales from the Mexican Mafia that was created. I helped him create it back in the, in the early 60s in Tracy. So he's one of the, he's one of the, the original mariposas. Because a lot of people don't realize that when they meet the M, they were called the mariposas first. The mariposas is a butterfly, you know, and you know what that's what. But back, they changed the name because it was a but. You know, a butterfly sounds kind of weak, but that was the original name. So he's one of the original mariposas. Because when you run into a carnal in the system, and you see another carnal, you say, "Hey, who's that?" Oh, that's Willie Bob. He's one of the mariposas. And in between the carnales, that's the that's how we call the originals. The originals are the ones that created the M that made it. Well, anyways. He's one that I got real close to. And it just happened that way that when I got to Old Folsom, me and him became cellies in Old Folsom in 1985. So when I first got to r and he tells, he tells the lieutenant, hey, see this youngster at Cornell? He goes, yeah, because they already knew him. He came back on a violation from getting out. I'm coming in in a new term. Well, he just came on a violation. He tells the lieutenant, I think the lieutenant's name was Hernandez. He says, hey, you back Martinez? And he says, yeah. He goes, hey, Hernandez, I want this guy to be my cellie. And, and he goes, who? And he goes, this youngster right here. I was barely 18 years old. I'm a kid. So me and him were talking because from Chino, we got the bus from Chino going to Old Folsom. So me and him were talking. And, I mean, he can understand that we're from the same area. Down in, back, then, back then, in the prison system, everybody ran under their, 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 their area code, like 619, 213 LA, different area codes. Well, back then, the area code was... In, in Imperial Valley was 619, and San Diego was 619. So automatically, he says, hey, when we, when we were first climbing up Old Folsom, he goes, hey, you want to sell up with me? I said, yeah. You know what I mean? But I didn't know at that time that he was a carnal because he never told me. But I figured he's all right. He's a little bit older, and he was, he's been in Old Folsom. And I'm not going to lie. Back then, I was scared. I was scared shitless. You know, because I'm a little kid. I was scared because I'm coming into Old Folsom. Everybody talks about Old Folsom. It's a deadly, it's a deadly, it's a deadly prison, and it was. So as soon as I got there, he tells the lieutenant, I think his name was Hernandez, 
and he tells he tells Hernandez, hey, Hernandez, I want this guy to be my cell. He says, who? And there was two older dudes. He goes, okay, who's one? The older guy right there? He goes, no, no, the youngster. So he goes, okay, let me interview him. And he goes, Cornell, come in. So I go inside, and I go in his office, and as soon as I walk in the office, he tells me, hey, Cornell, you know who that guy is? And I said, yeah. And he says, he says, Gato. And he says, yeah, yeah, but you know what he stands for. I said, what do you mean? And he tells me, he says, you know he's a lieutenant in the Mexican Mafia? And I'm like, no, I don't know nothing about that. And he goes, well, I'm telling you right now, do you still want to sell up with him? I said, yeah. Which I didn't know that he was that high, but I said, yeah. So we go back, and when I, when I, when I come back and I sit down, I told Gato everything that, 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 that Lieutenant Hernandez told me. And he said, what you tell him? I said, I, said, I don't know nothing about that, but I also want to sell up with him. Well, anyways... He's the first guy that I sailed up with. We go all the way to the to one building on the fifth tier. And we go in the fifth tier. Well, you're up there in the fifth tier. That's pretty goddamn high. Looking down, back then, there's only two rails. And you see all the way down. He's like, God damn, they throw you down the tier. You're going to die. So he would always tell me when we go to chow, he says, remember, they open up the door at 5 o'clock, on 5.30 in the morning for breakfast. You better be ready by 5. Because once they rack the door, you got to be ready. And I'm like, all right. So I get up, and I'm, I'm, I tell you the truth, I didn't even sleep the first night. Well, when I got up, when he got up, I was already, I was acting dumb, but I was already up. And we go out there, and, and he tells me, I'm walking, you know, you know how you walk? I'm a youngster. I'm looking down the rail, looking down the tier. And I'm saying, damn, it's real high. So he grabs my arm and pulls me towards the, toward the, where the bars are at. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. He tells me, Conejito, he always calls me Conejito. He tells me, Conejito, get over here. And I go, why? He goes, because somebody can throw you off the rail. Something happens, that's the first thing you're going to do. So I'm like, all right. He goes, remember, stay on your toes. And I didn't know that I was so green. I was so green. I was a youngster. I didn't know that there was already tension with the Nuestro Familia and the Mexican Mafia. And you got to remember, he's already, he's already targeted because he's Mexican Mafia. And there was dudes on the tier that were in F. We're in orientation, but there's dudes that came from other prisons. When you go in a prison, you got to go orientation tier first. Everybody's orientation. So as soon as, as soon as that we got there, he already knew. So he tells me that I'm, we're walking, and as soon as we walk in the chow hall, we're in one building. One building chow hall is a big ass chow hall. It can, it can, it can sit down easily, like easily like 200 inmates to eat. So as soon as we sit down, we're walking in. It's loud. Everybody, oh, hey, Gato, what's up? And Gato's introducing me to different dudes. And every dude he's introducing me to is all carnales from the Mexican Mafia. All, all dudes like, maybe a dudes that are a couple years older than me, that, that, uh, I, like maybe two, three years older than me, that already, already carnales. So he's introducing me to me, and he's telling them at the same time, he's telling me, hey, watch this going on. He's, good, he's, a good, he's a good youngster. And, 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 and he, did, he did a couple favors for Joe and, and Chino. So... They still haven't got word from Joe when I, when I when I got there. Joe said he was going to shoot word over. Well, anyways, I'm introdu- I'm getting introduced to everybody, and and when, when he hears all the noise and everything, he tells me, "Go ahead, it's cool, it's loosen up." And I said, "What do you mean?" And he says, "Ain't nothing going to happen." I said, "Why?" And he says, "We're sitting down, we're eating." And he goes, "Man, I got to show you everything, huh?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know, fool. Show me." So he goes, "He had the time and the patience to show me everything that's going on." He said, "Look, when you go in a chow hall and you see over 200 people or 100 people even." And it's fucked, and it's quiet. You better watch out, cause there's tension. Something's gonna jump. Something's gonna happen. And anytime you want a chow, you better be through shot, because anything can happen. And you're not, even if you're not near the near the area where they're gonna stab somebody, they're gonna kill somebody. Even if you're not near the area, you gotta be through shot, cause you see those gunners on the top. Those bullets are mini 14s. Anytime they hit a wall, look at it, it's all wall. It's all rock in here. When they hit the wall, that shit's going to ricochet. The first thing you do is throw the food off on the table in the ground and put the plate over your head. Because if that bullet hits your head, you're going to die. In your body, you might still make it, but the, the, your head, you got to cover your head. So, yeah, I, 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 he started teaching me all these things that I needed to learn. Because he was just doing a violation. Well, everything he taught me, I adapted to it like glue. Because I wanted to learn. Because I said, you know what? Because the first time when they said showers, and we went to showers, man, I, I thought we were going to go in the shower. Like, you know, you go home, you shower, you shower. Like, you know what I mean? No, we go in the shower, and it's, it's like 50 dudes all in one shot. Three of the homies in the front. Three of the homies in the front, a carnal and two surinas in the front with fierros, and the huda, the cop, is right there in the top. You have 60 seconds remaining. There's only like two, two, two inmates standing up. 
with his leg over with the gun like that, and it's nuts too much. Everybody's neck and we're showering. And then the next dude, the black dude's coming in the whites. So everybody, we protect each other. And the reason that we protect each other because there was war. Hey, Tony, I got to call you back. This is Conejo coming back at you. Hey, and the reason I'm telling you the story is me and me and Gato, because I'm going to tell you, God, I, I, I consider me and Gato like me. He's like my father because he taught, he had patience enough to teach me everything. And he was only doing a short violation. Me and him stayed together like maybe seven months. And when I got classified and they told me, we're going to shoot you to building three, uh, 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 I told no, I want to stay with Gato up there in orientation because Gato went to committee with me the same day, but they didn't release him to the mainland because he was doing a violation. The administration said, no, you're going to stay on orientation until you go home. So when, when, when he went first to committee, when he told me that, I told him, I'm going to ask him if I can stay with you. He goes, they're not going to let you with him, but ask him. So when I went in there and they told me, hey, you're classified, we're shooting you. You know, they tell you your whole program, you're going to get general general population. You know, this is this is a, a affiliated yard. You got Mexican mafia. You got AB, uh, black gorilla family. You got uh, 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 black panthers. You got you got uh, 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 cribs, blood. Well, they tell you all that. And I said, you got a problem? I said, no, I don't got no problem. You sign the thing and you sign like a thing, like saying well, something happens, you sign your life, you want to go out there. You know what I mean? Well, I went, and, and I told him, I see, they said, you got anything to say? And I said, yeah, I've got one thing to say. He said, what's that? I want to stay housed with Martinez. And he says, why do you want to stay housed with Martinez? You know who he is? And I said, yeah. And he says, he's, 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 he's a good man. He said, no, you know who he is? He represents, he's a, he's a lieutenant, a high-ranking lieutenant for the Mexican Mafia. And I said, well, I don't know about none of that. And he says, well, do you, why do you want to stay with him? I said, because I'm a youngster, and he's teaching me the things because he's been in this prison for a long time. They came back. He, did like, he told me he did like 15 years in this prison. And he says, yes. And he says, okay, you want to stay there? He goes, clear me. He can stay there. And that's what they did. They cleared me, and I stayed housed up there in the fifth tier with old man Gato. At that time, I should say old man because I was a youngster. He's like maybe 40, I think 40, somewhere around there. Well, anyways, uh, I'm now, but I'm getting released. It was, there was like three of us that did that. And I'm getting released from the top, coming down all the way to the bottom tier to go to the yard. So every time I went out, Gato would send me with orders. They go through this, go through that. Well, you gotta understand, this man is is a man that always has things going on. He's a highly, he's a he's what's called a superior strategist. You gotta remember, a lot of these dudes, what they do is they strategize themselves, like the like the book Sansu or the or, or the or, or Sansu, the Art of War, or Nicolette Machiavelli, the Prince. They study these books because they, they become superior strategists. Everything he does is a strategy to succeed in life, in anything. And his game was always succeeding in in, in, in making money with drugs and living comfortable in prison. Even though prison's a, a messed up life in the cell, he lived comfortably where he can have everything he wanted. And he always established that, and I learned that from him that he always came in a situation where he would always learn the angles to come out on top. So that's what he was teaching me. And every time I went down, I would go pick up, I would go pick up dope to go bring it to him. Or I would pick up stuff like cosme, uh, 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 cosmetics, food, uh, different things. You know, I would pick up every day, come in and bring it. And, 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 and I would tell him, hey, how do you do this? He goes, look, you got to always establish yourself. When, you get, when you're in here, the first thing you do is you establish yourself in the streets with different women or family or whatever you need to establish yourself to work your money. So whenever you need money sent somewhere so you can capitalize and buy something else so you can have to sell, you always got to establish yourself. You got to have a, what's called a base, your, your, your foundation. So when you touch home and you call, then you can have things done for you because if you don't have somebody doing things for you in the street, then you ain't gonna accomplish nothing. What you're gonna what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna be striving over your other brothers to get the crumbs that fall off the table. And you don't want that. You wanna be superior, you wanna be on top. So I learned that from the gate. So after a while I started learning that a lot of these carnales that were my age that didn't have a lot of things going like that, and they were already made in the end, man were jealous of me because I'm out there slinging dope in the yard for Gato. I'm bringing in money for Gato. And every time the carnage will come, hey, Cornell, what's up? Come here, youngster. I say, what's up? And I'll tell him, hey, I ain't no youngster. Fool. You only got me like two years older than me. He goes, yeah, but I'm a carnage from the Mexican mafia. You're just a sureño. And you got to give them that respect. So I tell him, yeah. And he goes, hey, what's up? Let me get, let me get a quarter gram. And I'll go, all right. And I'll get, the, I'll get my little book. I had a little book. And I'll mark. I said, what are you doing? So I'm marking your name for a quarter gram for $100 to send. 
And he goes, don't worry, I'm going to take care of it. I say, remember, I'm telling you right now, because Gato told me, he said, remember, this ain't my dope. This is, this is Gato's dope. Bernardo Gato, your, 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 your lieutenant, one of your lieutenants. And he's like, I thought it was yours. He said, well, I want some of yours. I said, no, no, no. I don't got none of mine. I don't use. I'm selling for him. And as soon as I tell him, I said, here, here, I don't want it back. Here. And a couple of times, some of them took it, and they came back and said, here, gave it back to me. Didn't even touch it. Because in between then, they talked. They said, hey, fool, you don't want to burn him because what's going to happen, you're going to get smashed. Because you got to remember, he's a capitan. You're just a carnal. You're just a warrior in the enemy. So you're gonna, if you don't pay that money, then you're going to get smashed. And you're going to get taken out. Most, most of it for us, because we're carnales in the enemy, if you don't pay another carnal, and they're going to give an opportunity to pay, but you don't pay it after that, they're going to take you out. To use you as an example. So they would come back and give it back to me. Boom, here. So I would guess it would happen. Now, I didn't want it after all. And then I could see that they would, they would get mad because I'm not a carnal in the Mexican mafia, and I'm dealing, especially a lot of the homies from San Diego that were already carnales. At that time, I was hanging around with Widow Sherm and, 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 and Roy Boy and, 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 and Rishi from old time. And, 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 and they, they weren't carnales at that time. So they would tell me, because me and we we're, yeah, remember, we're 619. So they would tell me, yeah, fuck you. They would be like, forget about them. F word them. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Just because they're carnales they, in Miami, they think they can just take advantage. And and, and I, I just, every time they told me, because Gato told me, look, you're going to run into some of my little little carnalitos, and some of them are scandalous. Just because they got that name, Emma, doesn't mean nothing. They're going to try and use you to give my dope, and then later on they're not going to pay you to try and use you. So you tell them it's mine from the gate. And I would tell them, all right. So, anyways, he taught me all this schooling, and that's why I see I consider a, he was a, like a father to me. And I ended up getting out. I ended up well, we'll go, well, well, let's go back. Before I even before once I hit the main line, you gotta remember I did a favor for 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 Joe Morgan and and and, 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 and when we were when we were in in, in in Chino. So when I got when I got back to when I when I got to Old Folsom, Joe already shot word. So at this time, when all these carnales are getting jealous of me, a lot of them started pushing the issue that, that why why is a is a, is a, is a Sureño shooting, uh, selling carne for old man Gato when one of our one of his carnales should be selling? So one day I go and I talk to Gato and Gato tells me, "Look, fool, these fools are making an issue because my little brothers are jealous and I'm not giving them an opportunity to sling dope for me. And the reason I'm having you because you live with me in the cell, but." Look, they want to put you up to the test. And I said, what's that? He goes, well, they want to see if you got heart because, you know, everybody that gets made got to do something. So I'm like, so what do you mean? He goes, look, there's this one bottle that I guess they're going to show you who it is when you get out there, and that was Tio Pio. Tio Pio told, was, was the one I was supposed to go talk to. That's Topo. Benjamin Peters, not Benjamin Peters. He ended up being the godfather later on. Well, uh, uh, he tells me, look, hey, Conejito, the reason we're putting you in this test is to see because some of these little carnalitos are, 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 are talk, trying to talk shit about you because you're not a carnal and you're selling dope for gato, so they want to see if you got heart. And I said, what do, what do, what do, what do I got to do? And I said, look, there's this one vato, he owes Feria, and he owes Feria to Kilroy. They're not Kilroy. And he's a gavacho, but they don't want to kill him. They just want him to hit, they want somebody to hit him. And I said, well, who is it? He goes, look, we're going to just take a walk. So we take a walk. We're going over the back of, by, by back of R&R where the weight pile's at. So we go back there, and the Gavacho's right there playing pinochle. So he shows me who he is. He says, see that Gavacho right there with a the big beard? I said, yeah. This Gavacho was a big old dude. You know, he was like, man, he had like 18s on the hang, big old chest in there, and I'm a youngster. So I look at him, and I said, all right. So he said, look, just keep an eye on it. Just get it through a routine, and whenever you can, you make your move and hit him. And all it is is a check move. Just hit him one time and take off. He told me, remember, this ain't like the movies where you stab somebody, he's going to fall. See how big he is? He's probably going to try and attack you. So I said, that's all right. So he said, you just hit him and take off. But remember, when you when you hit him, hide the field. Because right here, the gunners, the, the control, the guys in the, in, in the towers, they're all ex-Vietnam vets. And they and as soon as they see the field, they leave you. They're going to open fire on you. And you don't want them to take you out. So I'm like, all right. So at that time, I used to kick with Lefty from Hollywood Rebels, big old Lefty. So he comes and we're talking. He walks. What's up, Juan? What's up? Hey, what's up, Popo? He, 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 he shakes his hand and everything. And, he, and I tell him, Hey, what happens if I if, can I take somebody with me? 
and me and Lefty already talked before when we, when we first got there. We were youngsters. We first, when we first got to old folks, we already talked. Look, we got to take care of each other. Me, Lefty, and, 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 and uh, Gibby from Norwalk, and, and we already talked when we first got there. We said, look, when we get there, all we got to do is take care of each other, and we're going to be good and, 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 and look out for each other. So I tell, I tell Topo, I said, what happens if somebody goes with me in case he tries to take off with me? He goes, you can pick whoever you want. It's up to you. You got to do it. And I said, okay. He goes, who wants the fierro? He goes, homeboy right here. And that was, that was, that was, that was a, 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 a cuate from, 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 uh, uh, um, that was a cuate that gave me the fierro. So we go over to the baseball field. He tells me it's right there in the bottom. It's right, you guys just dig out the corner right there. It's right there. So I go down and I dig it out. And I grab it and I said, okay. So he goes, remember, Topo says, you know what to do. I'm gone. You already know who it is. You handle it. So Guate is right there. I tell Guate, I said, hey, Guate, how would you hit him? And he says, shit, when he's not looking. And, and I said, what happens if I hit him right? He said, you can do it right now if you want. You going to do it right now? And I said, I'm going to handle it right now. I'm going to get it off of me. He goes, okay, I already had the fierro. The fierro is already remade, everything. So I got him. I tell Lefty. Lefty says, look, fool, if he gets up, I'm going to drop him. Just hit him. <clears throat> so he's playing pinnacle. Boom, boom, boom. So he's playing pinnacle. So I come around him. And when I'm standing next, he turns around and looks at me. A couple of the white dudes right there, there was a homeless right there. Mexicano. I know I recognize him from our, from, our, from our building in one block in the top. And he, was, he looked like a third tier. So I see him, and I'm right there, and I'm standing behind him. And I look at him. He turns around and look at us, and we're just standing looking at the game. He says, damn, you guys winning? Who's winning? And he tells me he's winning. And as soon as I did that, he grabbed the field and boom, I hit him right in the side by the ribs. Boom. And when I hit him, he went, oh. And and when I when I hit him he gets up so Lefty just drops it. Lefty's a Lefty back then he's a young straight eighteen years old too, like me but he was already like six foot from Hollywood Rebels. So as soon as he gets up Lefty hits him boom hits him one time in the head in the face and he like knocked him out he fell to the side of the, and we I, by that time when Lefty hit him I was already I was already gone I was already going towards the chapel behind behind the side right there by the by the baseball field in Old Folsom. So I'm taking off. And Lefty hits this dude boom he drops and we take off. By the time I get to pretty close to where the phones are at old Folsom, they every shot, boom, get down, everybody down, get down. So I get down, but that we're, we're kind of way far. So I'm thinking, boom, I get the I get the fear and I'm digging right in the, in the in the dirt and I'm sticking the ground. And here comes squad, boom, here coming running, boom. Back, back then, you gotta remember, squad were the only ones who went, who, 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 who. squad squad were the only ones who used the the green suit all one shot. Everybody else was, was you, you, they used to use two pieces. They used to use a, a, a brown pant, green pants, and a brown shirt. Squad was the ones who used only all green. They came in. Well, as soon as they put the yard down, I was already gone. I was over here in, 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 by, the, by the phones, and I restashed the fielder to make sure I didn't have no blood on me. Lefty, I didn't know where he was at. He took, I couldn't see him. So we take off. Okay, that proved. My, 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 that right there proved to all the ones talking shit, because as soon as that happened, got those shower with all the carnales, because all the carnales started coming, shaking my hand, because instead of me waiting and saying, all right, or talking about, let me, I'm going to chase this dude, see where I'm going to hit him, I did it that day right there and then, and then Cuate went and talked to me for real good, back then Cuate was real close with, with, with Topo, that was like his right hand hitman, him and, 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 and Boxer from Artesia, well, that was, that was like his right hand man. So he goes back and tells Topo, hey, this youngster got hard. Fool, this youngster didn't even wait. He hit him right there in the end. So I, I didn't kill him. He ended up getting, going, to, going to the med, medical. He came back. The white dude came back. That was just a check move to make sure he paid that money to Kilroy. Because back then, you got to remember, when you were late, like if you told him you got dope on Monday and you told him, hey, Friday I'm going to pay you, if you didn't pay by, by that Friday on Saturday, you were getting hit. And you were going to get You have 60 seconds remaining. It's going to be a check move. And it wasn't going to kill you. That's just, and that was going to double what you owe. And only coming back at you again, I was explaining to you about Carnal Gato from Richard Martinez from Logan Heights. Okay, back then, when I, after I did that pegada in, 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 in 1980, that was 88, beginning of 86, I did, I was already over there by the, by the, by the, by the phones. When they, when I got down, I couldn't see Lefty, like I was telling you. Lefty ran somewhere the other way. So when, 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 when we got up and everything, I went back to the cell. Gato was proud of me, telling me, hey, that's good, youngster. And, and you got you got off. He goes, now I'm going to tell all the carnales out there, all the jealous carnalitos that, 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 that look where you stand at. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try and see if I can raise my hand for you. And I said, okay. And he goes, but remember, if I raise my hand for you, later on you're going to have to take somebody out that they want because that's the only way of getting in. And I said, all right. 
He said, but uh, I told him, let, let me think about that, because that time I wasn't ready for that yet, taking somebody out. Well, anyways, at that time, my, my homeboy Trampa was there, and he used to kick it with me too. My homeboy Trampa was real proud of me, because back then, my, carnet, my homeboy Trampa was already in the AMA. He was a carnet from the Mexican Mafia already. Him and my homeboy Humbert. Humbert Humbert, they were the only ones from the Valle Imperial, right there in Old Folsom, that were already made in the AMA. And, 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 uh, Mother Humbert Richie, but he's, he was in San Quentin. That's what you got to remember, that when they when they switched you from prison to prison, most times you just went level four, you just went from Folsom to San Quentin, and San Quentin back to Folsom. Once in a while, they shot you to Tracy. Uh, Tracy was another level four, but they they were using uh, Soledad as, 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 as only Soledad Central. Back then, they would shoot you too once in a while, because all Soledad they were using as a victim. Yard. Those were the only level fours back then. You got to remember, it wasn't built like now. Well, they got a lot of level fours. Well, after I did that, I got those shot word and told all them fools, hey, look, this is my boy, and I'm going to be raising my hand for him. And plus, old man, old, uh, Car Carnal, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Morgan, he, he liked them. So later on, that's what they did. They told, they told, they told, they told uh, 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 Chuco, they told uh, 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 Boxer from Artesia, Renee, they told Cuate, they told uh, 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 to re start recruiting me, start 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 recruiting me, to show me the ways. So that's who I started kicking it with. But in a way, I felt bad because the homies I kicked started kicking with, with with Lefty and all them that we drove up together. I had to leave them alone because I was always with these Carnandes that were already made from the enemy. Because they're recruiting me, so I'm hanging around with them and I cut these apples loose. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm feeling kind of bad because I'm trying to tell Lefty, come on. And, and, and Spider from Lopez Maravilla, I'm, uh, uh, Spider from Lopez Maravilla también. I'm trying to tell them, come on. They're like, nah, because they, they didn't want to be kicking it with the carnales because they figured like they're gonna want us to do something. They weren't, they, they, didn't, they didn't want to. The only one was Lefty. Lefty was down to do whatever. He was like, he, that's, he wanted to get made. And at that time, I'm not gonna lie, I, I wanted, I wanted to. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So, after all this is going on, Joe already shot word. Hey, you know what? That's my age deuce. He did me a favor to look out for him. So I had I had a lot of things coming my way now. Now nobody, nobody, nobody could speak up and say, hey, this youngster just carrying dead weight. He ain't did nothing. Because I handle my business. Even Quate liked it because Quate tripped out when I, he gave me the fierro and I grabbed it. And I tell him, well, what happens if I hit him right now? Is he going to hit him right now? They didn't even have a plan like to hit him right now. I said, yeah, I can hit him right now. He goes, what's the best way when he's not looking? When he's not looking right now. He's turning around playing cards. I can go over and stab him right now. And he goes, Saturday, you know, she's going to get down like that. I said, yeah. And he goes, well, if you can handle it, you can handle it. But make sure that you throw the fierro. Because remember, right here, the gunners, they'll shoot you quick. Within a second, they see a gun, they see you with a fierro, they're going to open fire on you. And they're going to hit you somewhere in the chest or whatever. If they get you in the chest, you're going out. They're going to kick you out or your head. So be careful. So the first thing you've got to stash it. Well, the reason I'm telling this story about Lanto is because, like I tell you, he was like my father. And I'm leading to the, to the end of it because now I'm going to go to 19... 92, when I, I think 90, yeah, 92, when I picked up my case in the feds, my bank robberies, and I went to federal, I had to go to, I had to go, because it's my area in Imperial Valley, I had to go to the federal, uh, the MCC in San Diego, so when I get to MCC, I already knew I thought it was busted in the feds, so I thought he was gone already, so when I get to the, to the, to the, to the fourth floor, that's orientation right there in MCC, I asked for a doctor, they tell me, yeah, he's up there in the ninth floor. So when I got classified, I tell, I tell the concert, I want to go up to the ninth floor. I get up to the ninth floor, and yeah, Gato's right there fighting his case. Him and Jesse Moreno, Carnal Jesse Moreno from, from Pozole, Carnal Jesse. But he wasn't a Carnal then. Jesse wasn't a Carnal then. So when I get up there, Gato's up there. And as soon as I get up there, he always a pinchy con he gives me a hug, he embraces me, he goes, good to see you, cabron. So... He said, what, you following me? I said, yeah. <laughs> so I, said, I got, I, you know, I felt good. So I said, yeah. So he, he tells me, he already had a good celly. He was going to move Toro out, Toro from Vista out, and put me in. I said, no, 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 it's cool, fool. Keep, keep his feet, man. I knew Toro, too. I knew Toro, too, from, from, from Tracy. So I, I ended up going. I said, he says, look, fool, this is what I got going on. I said, what's up? And he, he, uh, he pulls me in his cell, and he runs it down to me. He goes, look, I got all these bottles. He said, all those sort of dolls right here. This is what I got going on. Here we had dope, dope coming in and everything. And, these, and, and peep, right there, the, the, the game changed. Because right there, what we were doing is we started taxing all the main 
all the main cartel dudes. We started taxing like the dudes from the Medellin, the Cali cartel, and dudes from right here from Tijuana, Mexico, from different. Because you got to remember the borders right there. So everybody came in, Gato had that, so they had to pay a, 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 a tax, a, a protection tax. So man, we had leaks. Man, we had like swear to God, this ain't no bullshit. We had like ten thousand dollars a week coming in coming in just money of people that were paying us for protection because you got to remember in the prison system a lot of people got a lot of power in the street to do whatever any kind of organ like like a, that's what i learned italian mob uh, a cartel mob whatever but in the system it's hard for a person to pick up a weapon and go stab somebody or kill somebody for somebody else and a lot of people won't do that but you know who will do that that is used to doing that because by nature they grew up doing that in life is the Mexican Mafia and the Surenos. And that's what they, all the organizations, they know that these dudes will get off and kill somebody for you as long as you pay them. So that, they didn't have no problem with money. They had money. They're just, they just didn't want to pick up another charge so they can get out one day. So they didn't have a problem with paying us five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to stab somebody. So Gato let it be known from the gate, look, you got somebody who drives up here that's, that's, that's bothering you and needs to get out the way, we'll handle it for you, but this is how much you're paying. And Gato already had every Sureño there and every, every Carnaval from Mexico, we were getting at least 1500 in our books weekly, in our books, weekly. Because you got to remember, like, like I told you, Gato's an opportunity. He sees an opportunity, and he capitalizes. He's a strategist by nature. That's all he does is he thinks like a, like a strategist all day. So he already, when I got there, he was already here. He had that established. He goes, look, I need you, Toro, and Jesse to take over all this for me because I don't want to be able to ask you. Because Gato's the type he likes to stay loaded as long as he sees money coming in and being loaded. He's cool. So that's what we did. So we end up going, we go to the feds. We end up going to the feds, and uh, me and him were in Leavenworth, Florence, Colorado, different phases. That's, that's another whole story, but I'm leading to the story because just recently, he was in, 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 in a penitentiary in, 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 in up, up there, I think it was in, in Nebraska, or up there, I think it's called Lee, Pen, the penitentiary Lee. Well, man, he was already older. You got to remember, now he's like 74. He, he, he died, and they came to the, they killed him already. So that's why I'm leading to the story, and it hurt me, and that's why I told you that, like I tell you in, from the beginning of this story, that it's not worth it all these years in prison and then getting killed in prison like him because he taught me and I felt because he's like my father. Well, he ends up going to a cell, and this guy comes in, an Indian dude in a wheelchair, and he's from North Dakota. He comes in, and God already tells him, hey, I, I don't want him here. I got somebody else moving in. One of them, my, my carnal is moving in. And he goes, hey, 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 Martini, he's just coming in for a couple of days. And that dude from North Dakota, the Indian tells him, hey, man, kick back, old man. This guy's like maybe 40 years old, but he's in a wheelchair, but he can get up. But he has, he, something's wrong with his back, so he tells him, he got to say, you kick back, man. What the hell you think you're talking to me? You have 60 seconds remaining. Well, that night, he, when he got the one to sleep, that dude took out the arm of the, of the, of the wheelchair leg on the bottom where you put your leg at, and got the one to sleep, and he bashed it in his head and beat him to death with it. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. End up killing himself, bashing the death, so he never gave him an opportunity to even get up. Well, they ended up killing that 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 Indian dude. When the brothers found out he did this, like within that any brother got close to him, within a week or two they got close to him, ended up killing him, stabbed him to death, they killed him up there in the feds. But it hurts me to tell you that man, they killed my they killed my age dude, old man Gato, Richard Martinez. That's why I'm telling this story is because look at all these years that he was in prison. And, and all these years that he lost from being free, and it's not worth it, bro. Anybody is hearing this story, you, if you can relate, stop what you're doing and change your ways to the better.